Don't go away. Our feature film will begin shortly. Hold on to your hats folks, and on to your green jeans, and get ready to go a few rounds with the dancing bear, because our feature presentation is coming right up. Is that Captain Kangaroo? It isn't. That's Randall Schaefer, our host, and mystery master. For Hastings, Mystery Theatre. Good evening. Welcome to Hastings Mystery Theater. I'm your host and mystery master, Randall Shaver. Tonight, the corridors of mystery take us to 1948 for a Republic production entitled Homicide for Three. Navy Lieutenant Peter Duluth has a 36 hour pass in which to celebrate his wedding anniversary. His wife is traveled to be with him, but they can't find a hotel room anywhere in Los Angeles. A kind woman offers them her room because she plans to elope that night. While her husband goes for the luggage, the wife goes up to the room and the phone rings. It's a man who saw her go into the room and this guy on the phone thinks he is her cousin. Well, she resembles her cousin very much and the caller has made a mistake of identity. The caller tells her that a killer is hunting for her. Well. Her and her husband run off to warn the cousin, but they find her cousin dead, murdered. They got there too late. The police, of course, suggest that the young couple themselves did the killing because they were seen entering the house. Our male lead is Warren Douglas. He was a stage actor who tried movies, but he never made it big. He's best remembered as a writer of screenplays, Western novels, and some lyrics. He died in 1997 at age 86. Our female lead is Audrey Long. She was born in Florida in 1922 and signed with Warner Brothers after completing classes at a drama school. She worked in B-movies through the 1940s. She retired in 1951 and died in 2014 at age 92. Let's return to 1948 and enjoy Homicide for Three. like you ought to. Ought to what? Get married. Driver, I've got news for you. We are married. Well, then I can quit worrying. Mm -hmm. It's none of your business, but uh, we were married a year ago. I've been overseas a year. Oh, just getting together again after a year. Listen, chum. It's your job to find a hotel for us. If you can't do that, we'll find another cab. That's right. Look, mister, we tried 14 hotels and are all full on account of the convention. 
I can't think of any place in Los Angeles where you can get a room. Look, look, there's a hotel we haven't tried. The Sherwood. They're always full, lady. They got a waiting list a mile long. Anyway, try the Sherwood. Okay, the Sherwood. Clerk, my husband and I would like a room. Madam, I am desperately sorry. As you sorry. can see, he is a naval lieutenant. Today is our wedding anniversary, and we haven't seen each other for a whole year. That's right. We've been all over town to all of the hotels. You see, he only has a 36-hour pass, and I flew all the way out here from New York to be with him. But now our reunion is completely spoiled because we can't get a room. Oh, won't you please help us? Madam, we have a waiting list that is Just quite... a minute. Are you married? Well, not quite. I'm engaged. Oh, well, then you can't quite understand a situation like this. I'm going to be out of town overnight. You can use my suite. Pete, I don't know what to say. Say thank you. Thank you. Now, just a moment, Mrs. Rose. This is highly irregular. If you're giving up your suite... Oh, I'm not giving it up. I'm lending it to this charming couple, and there's nothing you can say or do about it. Well, at least they'll have to register. That I insist upon. I don't know how to thank you. You've been so sweet. I... Oh, think nothing of it, honey. I know what the score is. I'm in love myself. In fact, I'm eloping tonight. You are? Oh, that's exciting. You know, my husband and I elope, too. Only he was called away the very day we were married. Oh, what a shame. How inconsiderate of the government. Yes, wasn't it? You know, you remind me so much of someone I know. I do? You look exactly like her. <laughs> well, goodbye. Goodbye. Peter, wasn't that wonderful of her? It's priceless. Well, shall we go, dear? Send up our bags, please. Runt. Sweetheart, this is it. friend, too. Hey. hey, wait a minute. Don't be so generous with your affection. Although it was very nice of Mrs. Rose to pick this night for a loaf. You know, she said I reminded her of someone. All this and 36 hours to enjoy it. 33. We wasted three hours trying to find a place to roost, so we'll have to sort of make up for that. Uh, that was romantic, wasn't it? Oh, Peter, you can't have a cold. I can't? <laughs> Where were we before we were so rudely interrupted? I think you were going to kiss me. Thank you. Excuse me. I hope I'm not interrupting anything. You are interrupting. Go away. This is 624, ain't it? I gotta clean these rooms. Oh, no, not today. Clean them tomorrow. You'll have to talk to the housekeeper. I got my orders. I'm beginning to wonder if we're really meant for each other. Oh, Peter, when is she going to be through? I don't know. But I'm going to find out. Say, lady. Lady? Who? Me? Can I speak to you a minute? How long is this going to take you? Oh, about an hour or so. What do you have to do, shampoo the carpet? Well, I could do it quicker if you wanted me to. Sometimes oh. I... Well... Do it quicker. Yes, sir. Well, I guess we'll just have to sit and stare at each other until she's through in there. Oh, darling, you're cold. I know how you can get rid of it. You can go down to the Turkish baths while we're waiting. Yeah, but what'll you do? Well, I'll unpack, hang up my things. 
It's 6.30. We'll still be able to make dinner at 8. I'll tell you what I do. I'll call down and make sure they can take you right away. I'll bet it's a desk clerk trying to evict us. I better unpack the bags. Oh, maybe Mrs. Rose's allotment fell through. Oh. Hello? Yes, this is 624. Oh, you must want Mrs. Rose. No, no, she isn't here. She went away for the night and we've checked in for... Mona Crawford. Oh, no, no, I'm not Mona Crawford. I'm her cousin, Iris Duluth. Yes, yes, it is a coincidence. Yes, that's true. We do look a lot alike. No, no, I won't be able to look her up for a few days until my husband, Lieutenant Peter Duluth, goes back to his ship. Oh, no, I'm, I'm very sorry. You, you can't come up now. You see, my husband is just going downstairs to the Turkish bath. The um, Sherwood Spa, or whatever you call it. Yes, some other time. Goodbye. Who's that? The house detective? Some man calling from the lobby. He said he saw us come up. He thought I was Mona. Uh-oh. One of her lovers checking up on her. Peter! Well, you said she was dazzling and disreputable. He said he knew Mrs. Rose and also was friendly with Mona. Sure it wasn't the hotel clerk? No. No, this man had a strange quality in his voice, sort of, sort of guttural. He seemed terribly interested in us. Peter, he sounded sinister. Uh-oh, now hold on now. None of that clutching hand stuff. Well, he spoke in a deep, thrilling whisper. Oh, now, darling, you get the darndest ideas. You're all set for a case of jitters. Now, you just come over here and sit by me and I'll hold your hand and talk you out of it. Oh, Peter, please go down to the Turkish baths and get rid of that cold. Yeah. I guess I can't sneeze at you for 33 hours, can I? No. Oh, it's tough to leave you, baby. Bye. Be back in an hour. <clears throat> the room is ready, ma'am. Oh, oh. Thank you. Surprise, surprise. Peter, what's the gag? Where's your uniform? It's no gag. It's a long story. Come in, Hatch. Look, the... look, darling, somebody stole it. Stole it? This is Mr. Hatch. He's a private detective. How do you do? I met him in the steam room. He was trailing a delinquent husband. He's going to help me find my uniform. That's very nice of you. Oh, I think nothing of it. I have a boy in the service. Peter, how did it happen? Well, I checked my valuables with the attendant, got a locker key, went inside. Went to the locker, undressed, and put my clothes in it. Sit down, Hatch. Locker 168. Then I went into the steam room, and there I met Hatch. After about a half hour, I went out and had a good rub down. Look, my cold's gone. I'm not sneezing anymore. Peter, after the rub down, then what? Well, after that, I was feeling pretty good, so I went to the locker to get my clothes. I opened the locker, and my uniform was gone, and instead I found these. Oh, darling, it's perfectly simple. You just opened the wrong locker, that's all. No, we went through all that. It was a deliberate theft. I had the manager open every locker in the place. But, Mr. Hatch, why would anyone want to steal his uniform? Well, that stumped me for quite a while. And then I figured out somebody wanted a naval uniform. I know. It was a spy. Oh, no, Iris. It was nothing like that. It was just petty theft. The man didn't even stop for my valuables at the desk. He just scooted right past the clerk. Well, it wasn't exactly like that, Lieutenant. The clerk stopped him to ask him to pick up his valuables. He said he was in a hurry and he'd be back later. Yeah, you see? Just a petty larceny rat. Well, then he didn't get your pass or anything like that. I got my service ribbons. They were pinned on my tunic. Oh, Peter, that's terrible. Don't you have any clue? Absolutely none. Well, not quite absolutely none. The clerk at the desk said the man had a peculiar voice. Peculiar voice? I knew it. I knew it. It was that same man. What same man? The man that answered the telephone, remember? The sinister guy? Yes. Say, it could be at that. Hey, this sounds like something I should know. We handle all kinds of cases. Joe Hatch and Bill Daggett, confidential agents. 
Oh, that's exciting. I'd like to ask you some questions, Mrs. Duluth. Well, suppose we discuss it at dinner. I'm terribly hungry, aren't you, Peter? I'm starved. Won't you join us, Mr. Hatch? I'm sorry. I don't want to butt in. I'll, I'll join you later. Well, I'll go in and change into my dress blues. Hatch, I forgot to give you a retainer. Oh, forget it. This is on me. It's like I told you, I got a kid in the Navy, too. You better hurry up and get dressed. If you go back to that ship without that uniform, you're in trouble. How right you are. Happy anniversary, sweetheart. Oh, darling, I've dreamed of this. Mind if I say I adore you? I'd love it. I adore you. <laughs> you walk in beauty like the night. Whoops, Junior, your champagne shark. I shared nectar for a goddess. Nectar? Yes, champagne, champagne. Hey, Junior. Yes, sir. Look at those funny drinks down there. Yeah, oh, well, but champagne I is... I want no... one. You want one of what, dear? One of those tall drinks, like they've got. Look. Yeah. Well, if you want... Oh, no. No. Why not? I guess I can handle it if they can. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you could. Yeah, excuse me, please. Are you mad? Being out tonight of all nights? Didn't you get my warning? Do the flowers mean nothing to you? The roses are out. Oh, well, it's fine. The white rose and the red rose are out. One more drink and you'll be out, chum. Now, just a minute. The white rose and the red rose mean blood. Blood? Blood. What's a little blood among friends? Go on, sit down. Your picture was in the Los Angeles Sunday. My picture? Yes, your picture. Now be warned. You Please sit down and stop annoying the customers. I beg your pardon. Just excuse me a minute. You are the one who are annoying me, my nectar? friend. Nectar? You... Oh, nectar, nectar, yes. Yeah. Ah, now my little Venus, skull. I know what you're thinking. What? You think I know that man. Don't you? No. I never saw him before in my life. He mistook me for somebody else, that's all. You're sure there's no beard in your past someplace? Well, I'll look in my diary tonight and let you... Peter, he mentioned roses. Uh-oh. Here we go again. No, no, no. Then listen to me. Mrs. Rose, the woman who gave us her suite. Well, don't you get the implication? Nope. Roses? Mrs. Rose. No more for you, young lady. Peter, that man with the beard. I know. He said your picture was in the Los Angeles Sun, and we know that can't be, so he's drunk, so forget it. Well, all right, I will. All right. As soon as I've had a look at the Los Angeles Sun. Hi, folks. Hiya, Hatch. Any news about the uniform? No, but I got my partner, Bill Daggett, interested in the case. He's going to pitch in and help. Oh, that's nice of him. Hatch, we've got a new angle. Shall I tell him about the white rose and the red? Not unless you want him to think you're crazy. But, Peter... All right, Iris. A drunk with a beard starts giving us a line of double talk. Peter, darling, he wasn't giving us a line of double talk. That man had too much character, too much dignity. Yeah, and too much liquor. All right. Go ahead and laugh, but it was highly significant. We're sitting at the bar having a drink. This drunk ambles Peter. up and starts... Look. Hey, that's you. Look again, Mr. Hatch. You're a fine detective. That is my cousin, Mona Crawford. Oh, I get it. Whiskers mistook you for your cousin Mona. Oh, then I, I... I've got a warner. About what? Iris, we're not going to waste time visiting cousin Mona. There's too much to do. Too little time to do it. All right, then. I I'll just telephone her. Iris, will you cool down? If she knows we're in town, we'll never get rid of her. But darling, she's got to be warned. She's in danger. The red rose and the white rose. she allergic to roses? Peter, you are not being fair. You hire a private detective to find your old uniform, but when it comes to saving my cousin Mona from being killed or... Or what? Peter, there are worse things than death. Yeah. Name one. Iris, will you relax? That wild imagination. Oh, shut up. <laughs> you two. Give me a nickel. No. Give her a nickel. It's your anniversary. Thank you. I wonder if that guy with the whiskers is still in there. I suppose so. I ought to take a look at him. Might want to remember him later. Come on. Okay.
looks like he's putting over a big deal. The fire in your eyes so outdoes those flames. You have no idea. Darling, will you please get my wrap? Your wrap? Yes, we're going over to Mopus. Oh, no. But darling, she's expecting us. A man answered the telephone and said that Mona had just stepped out for a minute, but that she'd be right back and she wanted to see us. We're to go right over now. Iris, you're putting a terrible strain on my patience. But darling, we simply have to go. You know, I have a feeling that something's wrong. Do you know that the man, the man who, who answered, answered the, the telephone, telephone was... was the man with a funny voice? The guy's haunting us. Come on, let's ignore him. A fine gentleman you are. She's a lady in distress. She's no lady. You told me so yourself. But, Peter, that man with the voice. Will you stop thinking about voices? Your cousin Mona's probably having the time of her life. <sighs> Lieutenant, I think your wife's right. Certainly I am. You'd better go with her. Just a short visit. Make you both feel better. Look, you're supposed to find my uniform, not give advice. Peter. Oh, all right. I'll keep an eye on him. Miss Mona Crawford, please. Uh, what name, sir? Lieutenant and Mrs. Duluth. Oh, yes, Lieutenant. I brought your wife this time. What do you mean, this time? Uh, Miss Crawford's expecting you, sir. Uh, funny thing about Miss Crawford, usually likes a lot of company. People streaming in and out of her apartment night and day. Then all of a sudden, no one is allowed to go up, not even her maid. Only you two. <laughs> Funny, sir. Oh, uh, could you tell us what floor Miss Crawford's on? The third floor, ma'am. Your husband knows the way. I know what you're thinking. What? You think I've been here before, don't you? Haven't you? I was never in this place in my life. Darling, hadn't you better look through your diary tonight? The man was nearsighted, couldn't you see that? But somebody wearing my uniform must have been here. Dorman would have said so. Iris, we just can't go barging in. Oh, we're not barging in. We've been invited. No lights. That's strange. Turn them on, Peter. Mona, it's Iris. Mona? Look at the puppets. Oh, these are probably the ones she used in the circus. Iris, mm -hmm. look. The same two pictures we have at the hotel. Oh, yes, Mrs. Rose. I wonder where Mona is. Mona! Peter. Hmm? Roses. The white rose? A red rose? had the right dope. Oh, but Peter, he couldn't have been the murderer. No. Must have been your man with a peculiar voice. He stole my uniform for an alibi. Oh, let's call the police. Well, what's this? Never mind about that. Call the police. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is this Mona's handwriting? Yes. Do you read her? If you only had a telephone been trying desperately to warn you of the danger to all three of us. The roses are out, and I'm afraid to leave my apartment. Lock yourself in and don't admit anyone but Lieutenant Peter Duluth. He just phoned to say that he and ours are coming to visit me. Perhaps he can save us. He just phoned to say that he and ours are coming to visit me. Peter, when did you call her? I didn't. But it says here that you did. Not me. It must have been the man with a peculiar voice. The one who stole my uniform. But, Peter, the police, they'll think that you're the killer. I know. 
Oh, darling, we can prove that you're not. Yeah? How? By saying my uniform was stolen? By telling him that a man with a peculiar voice tricked us into coming here? By mentioning a drunken beard in a bar who babbled about blood and roses? Yes, it does sound silly, doesn't it? I wouldn't believe it myself. Let's get out of here. Oh, without calling the police? Without calling the police. And I'm going to take this note. Come on, let's take off. Oh, wait a minute, Peter. We can't walk out of here and just ignore this whole thing. Why not? Well, because Mona's dead and the doorman downstairs knows your name. Oh, that's right. The whole town will be looking for you. Not yet, they won't. They won't find the body tonight, and they might not even find it tomorrow. Now, we've got to go back to that hotel and grab that drunken beard and haul him down to the police station. He knows more than he's telling us. Well, suppose he's not there when we get back and we can't find him. No more supposing, please. That's how we got in this jam. Now, come on. Peter, there's the girl he was with, but where's the beard? How should I know? Could you tell me where the beard is? The beard? Oh, excuse me. Uh, wrong party. Hungry. Haven't had dinner. I'm hungry, too. Really? Well, excuse me, Mr. Duluth. <clears throat> Have some. Thanks. Hatch. Hi. What about Mona? Is she all right? Never mind Mona. Where's the beard? The beard? He left. That blonde brushed him off. Oh, fine. But he came back. Hatch, will you stop trying to play everything for suspense? Is he here now? Sure, he's sitting right over there in the booth. Somebody better keep an eye on him. If we lose him, we're dead. Forget it. He won't get away. What's all the excitement? Plenty. Mona Crawford's dead. What? She's been murdered. She's only the first. According to this note, there are two more people marked for death. Have you been drinking? I'm telling you, Mona Crawford's dead. And Rita, somebody's next. We thought maybe the beard would know who she was and what her address is. If this is on the level, we better go to the police. Oh, sure, sure. So they can slap me in jail and convict me for murder? Oh, no, we're going to talk to the beard. Wait a minute. I want you to meet my partner, Bill Dagan. Bill, this is Lieutenant and Mrs. Duluth. How do you do? Hi. Beard looks like he's really loaded. Wait here. Where are you going? To talk to him, of course. Why you? Well, because he's a man and I know how to handle men. You do? Where'd you learn how to handle men? Oh, Peter, please be sensible. We've got to find out who Rita is and where she lives. Lieutenant, your wife's right. Advice again. Okay, but I'm going with you. Hello. 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 Oh, what a beautiful... Won't you sit down? Thank you. That's all. <laughs> Waiter, could we have another... You know, uh, we were talking earlier this evening. We were talking yes, earlier... Yes, don't you remember? That was when you mistook me for Mona Crawford. Oh, you're not Mona Crawford. Oh, no, no. No, you are more beautiful, younger. You are poetry. Mona Crawford is prose. Oh, that's... <laughs> Waiter, could we have, please... Uh... Uh, do you remember the discussion we were having, you know, when you told me about the roses, the red rose and the white rose? Oh, the roses? No, oh, no. No, roses are blood. My blood. Who was that fellow? Don't you bother about him. He's nobody. He's a very nasty fellow. You are a very nasty fellow. How about another drink? Thank you very much. But I will please do the honor because you were intruding. Oh, and I want you to go you away, far to away. Look, look, look at me. There's such look, a thing as intruding look, in, look. in... There, that's better. Oh, you are a beautiful girl. Now, that a was thing so interesting about a... the roses. Don't you remember? You were going to tell me all about Rita. Rita? Yes, Rita, but you forgot to tell me her last name. And you forgot to tell me where she lives. Oh, Rita lives... Rita lives in... Will you go away, please, far away? Any luck? Uh, they all go through me out of there. Iris is trying to get the dope on Rita. Well, she's clever and she can do it. Let's get out of here and give her a break. Bill, stay here. Mr. Beard, you, you still haven't told me about Rita. Where does she live? Further discussion is impossible until we have a reply. You haven't even got a glass. No. Garçon, s'il vous plaît. been almost an hour. What's going on in there? I'm going in there. Take it easy. The joint's going to close up in five minutes. Oh, you don't have any more cigarettes. I don't have well, any Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go and get you some. I'll be right back. I, well, that's sweet. Don't be long. Last call for drinks. 
Last call for drinks. I call. I call. I call. Look, Lieutenant, if your wife's lucky enough to get Rita's address, there's one thing I want you to do. Rita's name is Brown. Rita Brown. Where she lived? 368 Oceanside Avenue, wherever that is. Oceanside Avenue? That's way out between Santa Monica and Malibu. Well, let's hurry. We'll go right out there. Not you. You stay here where it's safe. Oh, but Peter, I want to go with you. Not a chance. You stay here and help watch the beard. If we lose him, it's my... Well, just don't lose him, that's all. I know. I'll lure the beard upstairs to our suite. Iris, do you know what you're saying? Well, Hatch can go along as a chaperone. Hatch has got to go with me to help save Rita. That's no good. Two of us walk in there, we'll frighten her. Besides, your wife's got a good idea. We'll be on deck when the beard sobers up and get his story. Why can't Bill go with me? He's got his work cut out for him, too. Bill mosey over to headquarters and see if there's any loose bodies lying around that might incriminate the lieutenant. What a way to spend a honeymoon. Oh, Peter, darling, don't be so irritable. And please hurry. You know every minute counts if we're going to... if we're going to save Rita's life. Well, I'm off to see the beard. Don't worry, I'll keep an eye on her. You got a gun? Gun? No. Well, if you ain't, you ain't. Where's Mona's letter? Here it is. That's good. Show it to Rita so she'll know you're okay. But don't scare her. And don't tell her Mona's dead or she'll run screaming to the police. Your job is to get Rita back here at the hotel. And we'll take her and the beard and all of us and go down to headquarters and get you cleared up. Start rolling. But I don't know how to get there. Any cab driver will take you. If you don't hurry, you're going to spend your honeymoon the rest of your wedded life in the jug. Get going, chum. All right. I'll be back when I get here. With Rita. Tell to lose? Yes, but how did you... Come in, quick. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. I was afraid it might not be you. You're expecting me? Well, of course. You said you were coming. I did? Yes. The man from the drugstore just brought your message. He said you telephoned. You did telephone, didn't you? No. Listen, Rita, whoever phones an imposter... You're in terrible danger. I've got to get you out of here. Please trust me. I'm Lieutenant Duluth. The real Lieutenant Duluth. Here's a letter from Mona Crawford to prove it. Mona sent me to warn you of your danger. <laughs> what danger? You don't know why you're afraid. Well, I'm, I'm all alone here with burglars and all sorts of people. Listen, Mona wants me to take you to the Sherwood Hotel. You'll be safe there. Mona? Is she at the Sherwood Hotel? Yes. But why? She's perfectly safe in her own apartment if she keeps the door bolted. Please read the letter. It'll explain everything. Go on. Read it. Uh, I can't without my glasses. They're in that bedroom over there. On the table. Will you please get them for me? No. Someone's coming here to kill you. That telephone call was a fake. Oh, no, it wasn't. You're the killer. You were sent here to murder me. There's the real Lieutenant Duluth. No, I'm safe. I'm the real Lieutenant Duluth. Don't let him in. He'll kill you. Rita! You! Rita! Rita!
roses. Hi, Lieutenant. Where's Rita? I'll tell you when we get up to the apartment. Where's my wife? With the beard. Did you leave her up there with that? Don't worry. Bill's up there. He took over after he came back from headquarters. Mr. Beard, please wake up. Will you wake up? You promised to tell me about the roses. Yes, yes, go. What am I going to do? Mr. Beard, will you please stop snoring? <clears throat> Peter. Oh, Peter, I'm so glad you're back. Well, where's Rita? I thought you were going to bring her back with you. Rita's dead. What? Murdered? Murdered. Like Mona with roses? Like Mona with roses. And by a guy who wore my naval uniform. Are you sure? Did you see him? No. But I found this. Peter, your Navy Cross ribbon. I found it in Rita's hand after she was killed. What a client. I never knew a guy could get into so much trouble. What did Bill find out from the police? Nothing. They haven't found Mona yet. Good. At least I'm safe for a while. How about Sleeping Beauty? What would you find out from him? Oh, nothing. We don't even know his name. He passed out and we had a terrible time getting him up here. Why don't you mm -hmm. wake him? Just what do you think we've been trying to do? Mr. Beard, wake up, wake up. Don't Mr. Beard, Beard. Don't you're full of champagne. Oh. You, champagne? Gosh, no, I'll have... No more champagne for you until you tell us what we want yeah. to know. Oh, there's that beautiful girl again, young and tender. I'm getting older and tougher by the minute. Now, you listen to me, Mr. Beard. Mona Crawford and Rita Brown have both been murdered. Mona? Yes, and Rita, too. Mona and Rita? Yeah, Mona and Rita. Now, who else is marked for death? Oh, this is a nasty fellow again. I won't talk to that nasty fellow. Who else has been marked for death? Mona, Rita, and... Mona and Rita, and, um... Mona and Rita, and Colette. Colette? Who is Colette? Colette is Colette. Tell us, who is Colette? Well, Colette is... <laughs> Colette is a bird. A bird, he says. Oh, but a very beautiful bird. Oh. Oh, Hatch, what are we going to do? Ain't that something? A bird. First it was red roses, and then white roses, and now a bird. Well, it must mean something. Whatever he says turns out to be true, doesn't it? Don't ask me, lady. I'm through. I've had enough. Oh, you can't quit now. Lieutenant, I'm over my head. Divorces are my specialty. Yeah, but you can't desert us now. I'd like to help you, Lieutenant, but murder's out of my line. Hey, wait a minute. Where's your sense of loyalty? Yeah, now we've got the beard. So you got the beard. A beautiful bird. A guy will go nuts hanging around a man like him. Wait. I, I have an idea. We'll, we'll let him stay here and sleep it off. And then when he wakes up, he'll talk. He'll tell us all about it. Please, don't walk out on his hatch. All right, we'll stick. Look, it's 4.15. Bill and I'll go home, get a few winks. And when we come back, if he doesn't talk, we're going to the police. Shouldn't we find Colette first? Look, lady, I'm in no mood to be a pigeon for a beautiful bird. Come on, Bill. Well, we'll see you in the morning, Hatch. Good night, Bill. Walks in his sleep. Well, he can't get out of the room. I'll bet he's a bachelor. No woman would ever put up with that noise. Do I snore? Hmm? How would I know, Peter? Good, at 
relax. At least we won't be bothered with him. That's good. I think I'll sleep a wink. Two murders pinned on me already. Third one coming up. Birds. Beards. Time to what? Oh, hatch. Yeah, 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 right away. It's not night. It's broad daylight. It's time to get up. Is it? That's good. Let's have breakfast in bed. Hatch is here. Hatch? What's that? Oh, Hatch. A private detective. Now, you were awful sleepy last night. I was. Oh, I found out something. Hmm. Remember, you wanted to know if you snore. You do. Come on, get up. We've got a million things to do today. I know. I think somebody's at the door. Mm -hmm. Hatch! Huh? Oh. Just a minute, Hatch. Lieutenant, you're a lucky man. Yeah, I was born in a four-leaf clover patch. Police haven't discovered the murders yet. Oh, that. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Is the beard sober? I don't know. I haven't investigated yet this morning. <laughs> Where is the beard? Look under the sofa. Oh. Iris! Iris! Oh, good morning, Hatch. How are you? Iris, look. Look at what, darling? Huh? The 
beard. <laughs> Where is he? I don't know. He couldn't have gotten out of here. We had all the doors locked. It's elementary. Simple deduction. The man went out through the window. The window? There's a ledge out there big enough to hold a bicycle race on. Goes right to the fire escape. Well, he's gone. Well, what are we going to do? You got to find him, that's all. Did you frisk him for an address or identification? Listen, I don't frisk people. That's your business. Look, you're in trouble. You could help a little. You're framed for two murders. Oh, let's go to the police. Oh, let's go to the police. First, let's shave his head and cut his pant leg. <gasps> Why did I pick a client like you? Oh, pull yourself together, Hatch. They say it's always darkest before the dawn. Isn't that right, honey? Yes, Hatch, that's right. Hey, what am I cheering you up for? You're not in trouble. It's me. Darling, it is I. All right, it's you too. It's both of us. One thing's sure, we got to find the beard. You two stay here. Well, Hatch, you're not mad at us? Mad is not the word. Hey, I can't leave you here. Why not? Police will find one of the bodies and send out an alarm. Hotel management will notify the police. And they'll come up here and arrest Lieutenant and Mrs. Duluth. Oh, That's please. right. I gotta hide you someplace. Hurry up and get dressed. I've got just a spot. Okay, hop to it, baby. Thanks, Hatch. We just use this place to get a little sleep and change our clothes. What's that? A pony? No, oh, don't worry about him. Get down, Sambo. Get down. Now take my advice and stay here. Don't get smart and go out. Have you got a telephone in case we want to communicate with you? A telephone? Bill and I have to use radar. Come on, Bill. Well, good luck. Same to you, Clover Patch. All right, save that smart stuff for the beard. Well, anyway, darling, at least we're... I mean, at last we're really... At last we're really alone. Uh, Except for man's best friend. Well, this is ridiculous. Why do they need a huge thing like that in here? I don't know. But I'm getting sick and tired of being pushed around like this. Hey, look. What's the matter with you? Can a man even kiss his own wife? Oh, no! Peter, Peter, put him down and show him who's boss. Yeah, you bet I will. What am I, a man or a mouse? You're no mouse, darling. You're the masterful type. You, show you... him! A guy can't show. Down. Sit down. Down, boy. Down. Look, old man, you don't mind if we read the newspapers, do you? Well, we're going to anyway. Read the funnies out loud. It might put Sambo in a good humor. I've had about all I can stand. I'm sick and tired of letting everybody horn in on our honeymoon from, from corpses to, to canines. Now listen to me, you big lummox. I've had about all I can stand from you. You get back over on that bed and you stay there. Do you hear me? I said get back over on that bed and stay there. Oh. I'll show you. Come on. Come. Get up there. Go on. Scoop. Up. Get up. Now lie down. You see? Sometimes you just have to be firm. Oh. Nice going, Iris. Thank you, dear. Peter, look. Mrs. Rose. Alias Colette the Bird. Colette. Mona Rita Colette. Colette's number three. She's marked for death. Please don't be so melodramatic about it. Well, what are we going to do about it? Well, there's only one thing we can do. Get out of here and try to save her. Let's grab a cab. Driver, how long it'll take Don't to get... Don't tell me. I know. You know? Yeah, I can tell by the look in your eye. What? I'm an amateur psychoanalyzerist. Only I do it the hard way, in a cab. Do what? Tell you where you're going. Where are we going? 
A circus. Uh, oh, that's very clever of you, driver. Don't you like circuses? Sure. I got one of my own at home. Six kids, dog, cat, and a canary. And a wife. No goldfish? No, but I'm figuring to get me some guppies. Guppies? Yeah, guppies. Yeah, that's great, but can you get a little more speed on this thing? Sorry, Lieutenant. I got a law. But I can get you the early afternoon news. Situation. Now for the local news. Los Angeles has another front page crime story. The police have thrown out a dragnet for Naval Lieutenant Peter Duluth and his wife Iris who are wanted for a double murder. A reward has already been posted for information leading to the apprehension of the suspects, and all state, county, and city authorities have been ordered to watch out for Naval Lieutenant. Well, well, well. What do you know? Now I can win me a big prize without going on the radio. You're a Naval Lieutenant, ain't you? How, how do you know we haven't been to a masquerade? A likely story. You can't fool me. I'm a psychoanalyzer. You're a Navy lieutenant. You might know this guy Duluth. What if I do know? Yeah, we can split the reward. With all that dough, you can go to the circus every day, and me, I can switch from guppies to goldfish. You know, I, I just might be able to locate this Peter Duluth. Now, if you'll give me your address when we get out of the car. Swell, camp... swell, partner. It's a deal. Okay. Partner? Peter, we got out of this one, all right. But I don't see how we're going to get into that circus with every cop in town looking for us. Maybe we can sneak in the stage door. Oh, Peter, I hope you're right. <laughs> Hey, where do you think you're going? We're friends of Adam Collette's. Very close friends. We're uh, looking for her. So is everybody else. She ain't back from a honeymoon. She eloped to Las Vegas last night. That's what we heard. We wanted to congratulate her. Yes, yes, we wanted to congratulate her. We'd like to uh, wait in her dressing room and surprise her. Oh, it's down there. Number one, with the star on the door. Thanks. Thank you. Say, the police are looking for a naval lieutenant. Wanted for murder. Maybe that's the one. No, not him. He's a nice guy. Sure. Murderers are always nice guys. But what is he doing back here? Look, masterminds, you're always getting suspicious of people and cooking up plots. And some of them work, like I said. The characters in this case go way back to the days when I joined the circus. I know all of them. And I got some ideas on what's up. I still think all shrimp should be fried. You'll think different when you see me collect that thousand dollars reward. I'm going to get a cop. Pardon me, is Madame Collette in? No, and I'm half crazy. Why, well, the show is ready to start, and she ain't even here. Peter, look. Look, the roses again. Red and white. That clinches it. They're going to kill her. Well, the murderer must be here somewhere. Come on, we got to stop Madame Collette before she gets in here. Oh, excuse me. Will you please let us by? What's the matter? Don't you understand English? Get out of the way. Lieutenant Duluth. Mrs. Duluth. Very brave, but foolish. Peter? Peter, that voice. That's the man. Turn around. Turn around. I'll get moving. They're going to murder Madame Collette. We've got to get out of here. Try to save her. Help! Help! Let us out of here! Open this door! Oh, Peter, it's no use. We'll just have to stay here until somebody lets us out. Why didn't we... Ah! It's alive! 
disappeared. Then he was kidnapped. Oh, thank you very much. That's a tremendous relief. Now tell us what happened. Who stole you from our apartment this morning? Your apartment? Yeah, you slept on our divan last night at the Hotel Sherwood. I slept on your... Oh, oh I was wondering where I was last night. I, my memory skips a beat now and then. It's a harmless melody, but it's a little embarrassing at times. I mean, that's one way of putting it. Yeah, well, I do remember waking up this morning and, and seeing that, 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 that fire escape. And you weren't kidnapped. Oh, I wasn't kidnapped, certainly not. Say, are you Lieutenant Peter Duluth? I am. Ah, the police are looking for you. No. Oh, yes, they are. And you must be uh, Mrs. Duluth, Mona Crawford's cousin. The newspapers say yes, that you... Yes, yes, I know. But you tell us who you are. Oh, I'm sorry. May I present my... I, I am Emanuel Cat. Cat? Yes. Not Emanuel Cat, the great criminologist. Well, you're very really kind. Yes, I am. Oh, then you must know what this is all about. Who sent the roses and why? I sent the roses. You did? Yes, you see, that was my method of trying to warn your cousin and, and, and Rita Brown that they were in terrible danger. I knew that a direct approach might force the play. Unfortunately, my method was ineffective, too. And, and so I came down today to warn Colette personally. On my way to a dressing room, I was intercepted and, and, and kidnapped and thrown in here by Ludwig and Bruno Rose. Who the heck are Ludwig and Bruno Rose? Ah, they're the murderers, my boy. And they're out there disguised as clowns. Why do they go around killing people? Yeah, why? Well, you see, Ludwig and Bruno Rose were members of a once famous aerial troupe known as the Flying Roses. And Bruno was married to his Colette and Ludwig to Rita Brown. All four of them worked in the act, you know. But the real star of the act was Gino, the fifth member. He was a wonderful high trapeze performer. And Gino was married to your cousin, who did the, the puppet act in the sideshow. Oh, yes, I've heard about that. Oh, she was very good at it, too. Well, this Bruno was secretly in love with your cousin. And so, he, together with his brother, deliberately killed Gino. They caused him to fall from the very top of the... No, oh, it was a cold-blooded business. And they were convicted of manslaughter on the testimony of their wives. Hey, hold on, Mr. Cat. Wives can't testify against husbands. Oh, you know, you're quite right. What I meant to say is the girls got divorced. And then, together with Mona, all three of them testified against them. Well, then why aren't the Rose brothers in jail? Oh, my dear, this happened some ten years ago. They served their sentences, and last week they were let out. So now they're out to get the girls who sent them to jail. Exactly. Mona, Rita, and now Colette. Two down and one to go. Let's get out of here. We can't just sit here and wait for those guys to kill Colette. Yes, that's right. Can't you do something? You're a criminologist. Well, I, I thought of something. The thing we've got to do is to signal to them. Signal. Oh, fine. We could stand here and yell our heads off for days. Who'd hear us? Exactly. That's why I think we ought to turn off the lights. Turn off the lights? Well, they can't hear us any better in the dark. Well, I don't mean these lights, but that's the main switch there. That's it. This panel controls the lights in the main arena. We can signal them. Oh, Peter, you're wonderful. Isn't he clever? He certainly is. That's a great idea. Thank you. Could be a loose view. Well, what goes on here? How should I know? Thanks very much. Come on. Come on, girls. We're on. Where's Madame Colette? She's going on right now. Now, ladies and gentlemen, presenting... Madame Colette and her bird Come on, buddy. Peter. That's him. Wait a minute, Lieutenant. We want to talk to you. Madame Colette. Madame Colette, say, what goes on? The roses are here. Ludwig and Bruno Rose. Yeah, we've got to get out of here now. Come, Come on. on. We... Stay where you are. But I tell you, officer, you're making a mistake. The men you want to... Are... These are the men you want. They're desperate criminals. It's Ludwig and Bruno Rose. One yeah. word. Quiet! Quiet! You're all under arrest. Joe, get these people changed into their street clothes. I'll send a wagon for them. 
You I two just... come to headquarters with me. Let's go. Hey, how about my reward? You... You'll get it, short stuff. Lieutenant Duluth, Mrs. Duluth. I've been trying to piece together the reports on this case. Understand, by not reporting these murders, you broke the law. Yeah, but Captain West, well, I... What oh. else could he do? The police would have arrested That's him. That's hardly an excuse. But he saved my life. And mine, too. Please, please. Captain, why don't you send for our private detectives, Mr. Hatch and Bill Daggett? That's the least you can do. Uh, Captain, without intending if to... If you, advise. please. Now, Lieutenant Duluth. If you have anything to say in your own behalf. I have. Send for Hatch and Daggett. They can explain everything. Forget Hatch and Daggett for the moment. Two murders, you didn't report them. According to the law, that makes you an accessory after the fact. Of course, Hatch and Daggett is a thoroughly respectable firm. And what they say may act in your favor. Yeah. Fine. Send them right in. Can you identify these two men? Identify them? No, no, they were wearing clowns' costumes. And a lot of weird makeup. How could anybody identify them? Hatch! Bill! Oh, Hatch, I'm so glad you and Bill are here. Now you can tell the captain all about everything. I'm afraid the captain knows everything. Yes, Mrs. Duluth. There is much the captain doesn't know. Well, that's fine. You see, that simplifies everything. Oh! Oh, Pete, oh, that man with the baby, voice! Take it easy. He's not Bill Daggett. He's the murderer. I know, I know. It's starting to trickle through my tired brain. Believe me, Captain, these are the murderers. Ludwig and Bruno Rose. It's true. They murdered Mona Crawford and Rita Braun. That's right. But I can assure you, they won't murder anyone else. Take them away. You may go, boys. Thank you very much. And now, if you don't mind, I'd like to have a word with the lieutenant and his wife. Thank C you. Certainly, Captain. Goodbye. 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 Don't worry. Now. Captain... If those men weren't the killers, then then who are they? They're the real Hatch and Daggett, and two of the best private detectives on the Pacific Coast. Oh, by the way, we found your uniform. Oh, well, that's a help. I had a 36-hour pass, and I got two hours left. Don't worry. You can have it cleaned and pressed in two hours. Oh, I can? And what am I worried about? I wouldn't know, darling. <laughs> Please consider leaving us your thoughts in the comment section, as well as giving this video a like, and subscribing to our channel. Also, check out the link in the description below. Click the link to enjoy a free bonus Hastings Mystery Theater episode. Thanks again, for your kind support, that enables us to continue bringing you these great old classic black and white movies. Hastings Mystery Theater is coming to you from Hastings, Michigan, USA. We originally created this series for local access TV, around 2010, and in 2019 started uploading to YouTube to share these classic films from the 1930s and 40s with their worldwide audience. And don't forget to check out our mystery theme merchandise which you can find in the description below. In 1937, the world discovered Thorne Smith's topper and his vanishing girlfriend. Roared at them as ectoplasm did the darndest things. Two years later, the screen rocked anew as Topper and his glamorous ghost played hide and seek in Topper Takes a Trip. And now, Topper's back with a new playmate in the gayest of all their adventures. Get your cold feet off my back. You don't need all the covers, do you? Here I am, Tommy. Remember me, the girl that sat on your lap? Oh, oh yes, but this is hardly the place. My, my wife. I'll go, but every hair in my coat is standing on it. Now cut out the stalling. Who killed Gail Richards? Pick him out. In the first place, the girl they wanted to kill was Miss Kennington. Well, never mind who they wanted to kill. Who done it? I hate to go up those stairs. 
Would you mind coming up with me? Uh, upstairs? With you? Mm hmm? Now? Yes. I better come back in the morning. Please. I will not be quiet. I shall know that I can scream. In fact, I think I will. Ain't nothing like this ever happened there. 